All right, guys, if you've been following my channel recently, you've seen me teasing this new Ray Ross base bridge for quite some time now. And I think it's time that I finally do a dedicated review video for it. Now, there is a lot to love about this bridge. It is a complete redesign of the base bridge as we know it today. And it's very rare that we see a leap in innovation, especially when it comes to electric bass. I mean, we've been doing the same thing for like 50 or 60 years, especially when it comes to bass bridges. So this thing is super cool. I've had it for a long time. I had one on my great guitar build off build, and I've had this one on this bass for quite some time now. And the more that I've used it, the more that I've grown to love it. So with that being said, this video may be a little bit biased, but I'm gonna do my best to help you guys fairly decide if this Ray Ross bass bridge is the right bridge for you or your next build. I'm Dan, this is Guns Guitars, let's get started. Coffee, here's to you guys. So what do I love so much about this bass bridge? Well, I love that it's a total outside the box redesign on a typical bass bridge. And that's kind of what I am all about when it comes to my personal taste in guitar design, I try to do more of a form follows function sort of thing. That's why my strap jack is upside down because it just makes more sense when you're feeding your cable through your strap to come in down this way. It's also one of the reasons why I've started installing my tuners sideways so I get a natural break angle here and I don't have to deal with string trees adding additional unnecessary break angles. So therefore this design, you're gonna be far better off with string tension and sustain and things like that. So that's what I love about this bridge is that it keeps the string as straight as possible so that there's no unnecessary break angles, there's no unnecessary extra friction. It's just pure tonal transfer straight to the saddle down into the wood. In order to keep this video less biased, I'm actually just gonna play you some sound samples back to back between this bridge and a Fender style bridge. And I'm not gonna tell you which one is which, and I'm gonna not show you which one's which, and I'm just gonna let you guys listen and come to your own conclusion based on a blind test, so to speak. So you can decide if the tone is better or not with this bridge, if you think the sustain is better or not with this bridge. You guys are gonna decide which one you think is better overall, and then I'll tell you in the end which one was which. So I've already got some sound samples recorded with this bridge. Let's go ahead and just swap it out real quick and put on a standard Fender style bridge. So real quick, before I remove this thing, I'm gonna show you how to adjust this thing for intonation and string height and radius and stuff, because it's a little bit different than your standard bridge, okay? It comes from the factory with a special tool, which I was originally put off by because I just didn't want to have to need a special tool to make these adjustments, okay? This is how you adjust the intonation, right? As you go like this, you can see it pulling it in or moving it back out, okay? Um, and then this side is for adjusting the string height, right? So this, as the string holds this still, you twist this sucker and then that'll bring it up or down depending on which way you're screwing it, right? So I was off put by having to need a special tool because if you're on a gig and I've been on many gigs where I have to make adjustments, you know, I, if I need to replace a string and it's not the proper gauge, so then I have to re-intonate it real quick or if I need to, you know, adjust the string height to compensate for the extra bend, you know, it's, it's pretty often that you're on a gig and you need to adjust your setup. And so if I was ever on a gig and I forgot this tool or it somehow didn't make it into my gig bag or my bag of tricks, as I like to call it, then, you know, I couldn't just borrow a set of Allen keys from another musician because everyone's got Allen keys because that's how you typically adjust your stuff, right? Well, with this bridge, you can make the same adjustments with an Allen key. So I think they just didn't, you know, include an Allen key because you don't need an Allen key specifically for this. Really just anything that's long and straight. I mean, you can improvise whatever tool you want or in a pinch, I mean, you can really even just use your fingers to make these adjustments. As long as you take the string tension off, you can make your adjustments, you know, just with your feet, fingers. So in my opinion, while I was originally put off by having a special tool, I think they only include a tool just so they can say they include a tool. I would much rather have a bridge where I can improvise a tool on the spot. So even, you know, if a fellow band member doesn't have a set of Allen keys, you know, you can use just kind of whatever you find to make your adjustments or your fingers if you have nothing. 
So that's a super cool feature about this bridge. All right, let's go ahead and take it off and put on the fender style bridge so that we can do a back-to-back -back comparison of a traditional bridge as opposed to this one. Now, obviously, since I had this bridge in mind for this base build from the beginning, I went ahead and drilled all seven screw holes just so I get the best engagement possible, but it's not necessary. The reason why they put all seven holes on there, I'm gonna show you, is because if you have a standard five hole fender bridge, it is a direct fit replacement for these five holes, okay? You wouldn't have these extra holes out here on the side, right? So why, why do they have those extra two holes? Well, in case you have a bridge like this, okay? This is a Music Man style bridge. They were thoughtful with these screw holes to ensure compatibility when swapping out for a different type of bridge. So whatever bridge you have, aside from the typical Gibson like three point bridge that you know uses the three posts, um, any bridge that screws down, this should be a direct fit replacement without having to drill new holes. So anyway, so we can decide if we wanna use a Music Man style bridge for this demo or if we wanna use a Fender style bridge but I did say in my last video that I was gonna compare it to a Fender style bridge, so I guess I'll stick with that. So to keep this sound demo as fair as possible, I use the exact same recording interface, the exact same editing software, the exact same EQ settings and gain settings. The only thing that's different is the bridge. Now due to the nature of a single coil pickup, I did get a little more interference on one recording than I did on the other. So you'll notice a tiny bit more background noise on one versus the other. I'm not gonna tell you which one, but just try your best to not let that little bit of background interference influence your decision. We're gonna go ahead and do a blind test now. I'm not gonna tell you which one is A and which one is B. You are just gonna decide for yourself which one you think sounds better and sustains better. And then afterwards, I will tell you which one was which.
made up your mind? I hope you have, because I'm about to tell you which one was which. Sample A was the standard Fender style bridge. Sample B was the Ray Ross bridge. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you my opinion based on my experience with it. Obviously, I want to know your opinion. Let me know in the comments which one you think was better, which one you think sounded better, which one you think sustained better. But personally, you guys already know that I absolutely love the Ray Ross Bridge and I like it because when I listen back on these sound samples, it sounds to me like the Ray Ross Bridge has a little more bite in the upper, upper mids. So somewhere around like the two to three kilohertz range, I feel like this thing really punches through, which is great for cutting through a mix. With a standard typical high mass bridge, you typically round off the high end and the high mids a little bit, and it becomes a little bit more mid rangey, kind of around like the 800 to 1000 hertz range. And so I like that this maintains a lot of that upper end bite. Now what really blew me away though, was with the sustain. That to me was the most apparent actually when I was playing that little jazzy bluesy walking bass line. And that's because while I played both with what I felt like was the exact same technique, you can actually hear the sustain between notes on this one better. And I did not expect that for a walking bass line. And then lastly, for this one, when I was playing that uh, open string sort of chord melody thing, I noticed that the lower notes on this, you get those really cool like bell-like tones on the open strings. It almost sounds like a piano string when I hit that open down-tuned uh, low D string. So obviously all those things together score major points in my book as far as a bass bridge. It just really checks all those boxes. Now, the differences are extremely subtle and some of you guys may not have even noticed a difference at all. If that's the case, then obviously it's not worth spending the extra money for a bridge like this. I mean, even when it comes to best value, I would say that this thing is probably about 10% better than any other bridge on the market and maybe 15% better than your standard cheap OEM hardware. And so you have to weigh in the cost to benefit ratio. Are you willing to spend three to four times the price to get something that's only 15% better? So my recommendation is if you are one of those top 1% of players, the people who are gigging, recording session musicians, and you're looking for just that little extra something to give you the edge over your competition, then this is going to be the bridge for you. But I think honestly, for most regular players, unless you're the kind of person that really just needs to have the best of the best gear all the time, the best of the best tone all the time, for most players, this is probably overkill. But still, even more so, I love what this represents. This represents people that are still trying to design and innovate for something that we just don't see a lot of updates on, okay? Like I mentioned earlier in the video, you know, we haven't seen an update on a bridge saddle design in like 50 or 60 years. And I think it's awesome that people are still trying to re-engineer stuff to make it better. And so I think we should hands down be supporting companies that are trying out new ideas that actually work. I mean, I actually can hear a difference between this bridge and another bridge. Now, aesthetically speaking, this bridge really satisfies my OCD, but those who are purist as far as they just love the, you know, original vintage designs, you know, this is gonna rustle some feathers because it definitely does not look normal. Um, but it also doesn't stick out like a sore thumb either. It's one of those things where, you know, you're only gonna catch the eye of people who have a real keen eye. You know, from a distance, no one's gonna know that this is a weird, awkward looking bridge. But up close, people might look at that and go, what's that? Tell me about that. Why is it better? And that's super cool. So this bridge definitely scored a lot of points in my book. I want you guys to let me know again in the comments. Did you guys hear a difference? Which one did you like better? And if you like the standard bridge better, that is absolutely okay. A lot of this comes down to just personal preference and I wanna know your guys' opinion. So again, just let me know in the comments how you feel and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification. Until next time, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars and I will see you in that next video.